Welcome once again to this 10-minute word break. This is Youth Pastor Alicia Fields of Victory Fellowship Outreach Ministries based out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. I invite you to please grab your Bible or your Bible apps. We're going to go into the Word of God. Um, but before we do, we are just going to just um, share just a snippet of this song. Um, you can follow along with me if you know it, um, but it's going to set the foundation of today's word on today. Hallelujah. I shall have what I decree. As I believe it belongs to me. I shall have what I decree, and I believe it belongs to me, so I'm going to speak. Speak it, speak it. Oh, I shall have, I shall have what, I decree, what I decree, and I believe. It belongs to me. I shall have what I decree. And I believe it belongs to me. Amen. We just thank God for um, that song that's set in the foundation today of what we're going to be talking about. And I'm going to go ahead and give you my subject before we get into the word. And the subject today is going to be, I decree, I decree. Amen. We're going to be looking at the word of God. I'm going to invite you to turn to the book of Job chapter 22, verses 27 through 28. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version, um, but you're as always welcome to follow along and whichever version of your choosing. And it reads as follows. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Amen. And as we were saying that today's topic is I decree, I decree. And so as a song and the psalmist, the song was written by um, the artist Myron Butler. Um, it begins to say, I shall have what I decree. And so we began to look at the definition of the word decree. To decree means to officially decide or order that something must happen. Uh, it is to speak a thing. Okay. So um, we see in this verse in um, Job, how it begins to say that we shall have the thing that we decree and it shall be established unto us. And so when we began to look at some biblical example and context around declarations and what it means to decree, I couldn't help but to reflect on um, some occasions in um, the Bible where decrees were made and things had to shift or things had to change or realign. Um, and so one of the examples that came to mind was Esther. We know that Esther had ascended to the throne um, and there was a decree that had gone out and which um, all of the Jews were going to be slain um, because of a wicked uh plan that was devised against them. But uh, Esther took her plea before the king 
and the decree was changed and, and began to say in Esther chapter nine, verses 29 to 32, I'm not going to read it in your hearing in its entirety, but the Bible talks about how this decree was made by Esther uh, that really confirmed um, the season of the matters of Purim. And so it was a time in which the Jews would remember that God brought their deliverance. And it was one that they will remember from generation to generation. But a decree was a declaration. It was something that was spoken and it caused things to shift. So there was one decree that was made, um, but there was a second decree that had to be made to shift what had been spoken. Uh, one of the other examples in which we know there's biblical context around decreeing, uh, we, be look, we began to look at um, God in the creation in the book of Genesis. As we read the account of the creation, the Bible begins to say, and God said, let there be, and there was. And so we know that there was a series of declarations being made in the heavens by God. And so things began to respond to his voice. Uh, we know that the worlds were framed by his words. We know that the uh, heavens were established and um, he began to divide the waters um, and began to call forth life in the water, call forth the seed of the earth all at his word. And so when we begin to look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, uh, this was Jesus speaking and he says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So in other words, Jesus began to say, I'm going to give you some keys. And these keys are voice activated. Uh, we're living in a society and in a time period where we have smart homes, uh, where you can now turn on light switches at the sound of your voice. You can activate your television at the sound of your voice. You can turn on music. Uh, one of the most common examples of that is uh, Google's Alexa. Alexa, do this. Alexa, do that. Or even Siri. And um, if we have the technology to do it, it has a similar pattern after really voice activation, which really was established by God himself when he began to give man that same creative power. When we look in the book of Genesis, we know that Adam was given the authority to name to name the animals. And so to name something means to identify it. It means to assign uh, an assignment to it or even uh, uh, identify, you know, what it will be known as. And in the same way, Jesus was speaking and saying, even that which you shall bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And so in other words, we go back to Job tying this all together, that from the very beginning that God himself gave us the authority to decree. And so today I ask the question of you, what is it that you are decreeing? Uh, we know that, you know, the atmosphere can shift at our word. We know that Christ, you know, began to speak some things and things began to align. So, you know, we know that sickness must bow to the word that you speak. Are you speaking scriptures of healing? Deliverance must be raw at your word because the Bible has numerous examples of scriptural context in which we can decree in the atmosphere and cause deliverance to take place. Miracle signs and wonders can happen at your word. So your words have power. And so today I just really want to decree. Um, encourage you um, that you can decree a thing and it shall be, as we saw in this uh, scripture that we read on today. So I ask today, what is it that you decree and speak and watch God move on your behalf?